As I'm putting more focus into my YouTube videos this year, I thought it would be a cool idea to share some of the channels that have inspired me recently. I'm still working on finding my own identity in terms of how I tell stories here. And I think it's really useful to draw inspiration from a number of different places and kind of pick and choose pieces from each of them to incorporate into my own videos. With the goal really being to take those little pieces here and there from videos that inspire me and combine them all into something new, something that hopefully eventually can develop into my own style, something that I can be known for. So with that in mind, today I wanna to share five of the channels that I have been drawing inspiration from as I continue to find my own lane here. There are obviously far more than just these five channels that I watch, but these are the ones that have stood out to me recently. So let's get started. Coming in at number five is Allison Anderson. I really enjoy her videos because she does an amazing job of documenting her trips in a relatable way. And I think I can learn a lot from her in terms of how she structures her travel vlog videos. Because when I'm on a trip, something I always struggle with is finding the balance of documenting the experience and also enjoying the experience at the same time. Especially recently, there's been some trips where I went on where I wanted to make a vlog, but I decided when I got there that I wanted to be more present instead. And I find it really hard to mix the two. But I think the way Allison structures her travel videos hits a really nice middle ground where she does some vlog clips, but also has voiceover parts with B-roll where she shows you what she is seeing and then later on records a voiceover to kind of explain it. And I think that's just a really good way of doing it. And it's something that I wanna to try to incorporate more in my videos. Probably my favorite video of hers currently is the one where she went to Antarctica because that's definitely one of my absolute dream places to go. And she did such a great job of documenting the whole thing. So I would definitely check out that video first if you're gonna go look at her channel. Tim Kellner. It's hard to describe exactly why I find his videos so captivating, but they're just so, so good. He doesn't upload super often, but when he does, it's always an instant watch for me. I think the reason I'm so fascinated by his videos is that he finds a way to tell a story through his visuals and music, which he makes himself, by the way, which like, that's just insanely cool. But yeah, he finds a way to tell a story through his visuals and usually there isn't really any dialogue or at least there's very little. And so to tell a, a story and translate a feeling to the viewer in that way is pretty rare and a difficult thing to do. So I think that's why it's worth kind of looking and studying his videos. On the surface, his videos seem very simple, but there really is just something so unique and amazing about them. And I think you just have to watch a few to really know what I mean. It's really difficult to describe without seeing them. They're all incredible, but a couple of favorites of mine I would suggest starting out with is Technicolor Mountains and City of Dreams. I've watched both of those ones way more times than I'd like to admit. I think I've been watching Maddie's videos for the longest out of anyone on this list. And it's been really cool to see his channel just absolutely explode over the years. Obviously he is a really talented filmmaker and storyteller, but what has always stuck out to me about him is how impressive just the sheer amount of work is that he gets out. He uploads very consistently, even to daily at one point, and he's building real businesses outside of YouTube as well. His work ethic is just crazy, and it's something that I really respect as someone who has always found it very difficult to find consistency on this platform. A lot of his videos sort of feel like if Casey Neistat also cared about making his vlogs cinematic and spent time color grading them, if that makes sense. And that's not a knock on Casey at all. Like Casey is a master of storytelling and I think that was always his focus. But it's nice when someone takes that and also makes the videos look very pleasing and cinematic and color grades them, shooting and log, stuff like that. Maddie inspires me in a lot of ways, but I think the biggest takeaway for me with his content is just how real of a business YouTube can be. Like he has 
full-time employees, I'm pretty sure, helping him. And he's making real productions outside of his channel as well and starting companies. So as someone who has been self-employed for many years now, it's pretty cool to see that maybe I could transition into YouTube being a bigger part of my business in the future as well. And Maddie is just evidence of that. Next up, we have a channel called Life of Riza. I actually only discovered her channel recently, but it is just incredible. I'm really, really, really obsessed with it. What I love is that she relies on storytelling to hook the viewer in. There's no flashy transitions or crazy cuts. You just feel this incredibly warm feeling watching her videos as she talks about life, her struggles, her successes, and just a lot of very relatable topics. It really feels like each video is a new episode of a documentary just about her life. And the way she lights and color grades her scenes, it feels really nostalgic, like you are watching her memories almost. In addition, the way she uses storytelling, composition, and thought out motivated camera movement is just really refreshing to see in a world that feels increasingly like everything has to be flashy and in your face to get attention. Her content is extremely satisfying to watch. And as I said before, it just gives you this sort of sense of nostalgia, even though it's not even your own life, if that makes sense. But yeah, I would highly recommend checking out her channel. It's incredible. It's definitely inspired me a lot. And I think it will inspire you too, if you're a filmmaker. Finally, we have Schaefer Nickel. And man, the way he tells stories is just so unique. I guess the best way to describe his content is that each episode is kind of like a video essay. That doesn't really do it justice, but every single video has a clear purpose. And it's like you get to look into his unbelievably creative mind as he shares his views on life with a little bit of humor on the side as well, which I really appreciate. And he just has this very likable way about him. And that really comes across in his videos. His videos also remind me to film more everyday moments. Like it shouldn't only just be about climbing mountains and getting picture perfect scenes. Oftentimes the real stories are in the everyday moments or when things don't go exactly to plan. His videos have a depth to them that always leaves me with interesting thoughts or perspectives about life. And I really feel like he has to be one of the most underrated channels on YouTube. A great video to start out with on his channel, if you are checking it out for the first time, would be his one titled, Van Life is Dying and This Trend is Replacing It. This video is just, I've watched it a few times now and it's just genius, the way he pieces it all together and it all comes together full circle at the end. And the whole thing is kind of just a joke, but it's also genius storytelling. Like you just have to watch it and I think you'll be hooked the same way that I was. All of these channels really inspire me in different ways. The way Allison documents her travels, Tim Kellner's visuals and the fact that he makes his own music, Maddie's way of making vlogs engaging and exciting and showing that YouTube can be a real business, Life of Riza reminding us to romanticize our own lives, and finally, Schaefer's unique storytelling and reminder to film more moments that aren't picture perfect, but rather always focus on the story first. I love the idea of putting all of these concepts together, mixing them up, and obviously including some of my own tendencies in there as well, and sort of seeing what comes out of that. And I'm sharing this with you because maybe this is a thought process that can work for you as well if you're trying to figure out your own way of making things. That's just kind of how my brain works because I think every artist starts by mimicking his or her inspirations and then slowly branches out into their own lane. So I'm excited to see which direction I'll end up going in the long run as I draw from these inspirations and try to find my own path uh, in making videos. So that's it for today. I will link all of the channels I featured in the description below. I seriously do recommend all of them so highly. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you got something from it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you would like to keep following my journey here. And I will see you in the next video.